go to the other side and uh, again just do the same thing. So, um, oh, and I just automatically uh, created an edge there, and I'm just going to actually do this. So I'm making the range selection here as well. There we go. Okay. So now, y making use of the edge ring and uh, range selection, we've managed to elegantly select those edges. Uh, this is great. I'm going to be on the internet as the person who cannot select an edge ring selects successfully. Okay, successfully. There we go. So, uh, bevel components. That's what I think I'm going to do. And we're just going to make sort of this a little bit of a, almost like a fillet intersection here. Maybe even round it off. Just make that sort of connection to the, to the, uh, to the body just a little bit better. Let's have a look at that and see. Okay, that's a lot better, isn't it? Yeah. Looks like it's sort of more intended as well. Now, the other thing is uh, I was looking at the uh, profile that I have here, and I think that this profile is maybe not not perfect. So uh, again, just go in there, scale it down a little bit, maybe uh, pull in. I can always just pull in uh, the points or pull them out to make it a little bit sharper. Um, maybe pull back points if I, I think they're too much. Just, you know, just adjusting the points a little bit so we have some sort of idea. And the other thing is I think this is a little bit too far forward. It needs to be a little bit more swept. So we can just bring them back a little bit. Okay, uh, there we go. That's uh, better. Now it's looking a little bit less like a helicopter and a little bit more like something else. So I'm glad I didn't say I was going to build a helicopter. Now, um, up at the top, we need something up here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, duplicate these guys and scale them up. And uh, this is going to be some sort of, I don't know, air intake or something like that. And uh, okay, I don't like this back thing here. So we'll just uh, grab these points and actually just get rid of those. Oh, and I didn't actually want to get, I should have just a normal collapse on there. But we'll just uh, reconnect these real quick. That's fast enough. Okay, and so we now have a nicer sort of uh, shape on top. And uh, again, we'll just put a bevel on these guys so we have a nice little bit rounded uh, rounded edge there. Doesn't have to be completely beveled, maybe just a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build this into an air intake or something like that. So just, uh, again, duplicate it, scale it in a little bit, or I could put an inset if I wanted to. And uh, again, just sort of put a little bit of a, a duplicate and inset and then a complete duplicate all the way so that creates a nicer sort of rounded type edge. There we go. Something like that. Now we're uh, looking a little bit better here. Now one thing you'll notice is that it's always a sort of shadowy on this side. I should have done that a long time ago actually but I haven't been working on this side much. In the display options if you go down to the bottom you can turn on a headlight for modeling which is fantastic because it means that then you'll always have light no matter where you look. Uh, that's a really useful, uh, really useful feature. And I should have gone into that right away, but I didn't think of it, and so I didn't. Now the other thing is, uh, we'll just bring this down a little bit. We don't want too much of an air intake. There we go. Okay. So, what's next? Uh, let's build some uh, rotors or something like that for for the ends of these guys. I think we'll just stick them on the ends. Maybe two, maybe two uh, sort of big fan type things. So. Okay, in order to build a fan thing, what we need is, uh, let's just take this guy and actually just hide him for now. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a big, uh, actually we'll just build it by curve. So we'll just grab a curve and um, we'll revolutionize it. Revolution! Okay, so basically, draw a point. Hello? What have I done? Ah, there we are. Okay. Let's uh, draw one right and smack in the middle. There we go. And um, actually, I'll just draw the rough outlines and then I'll modify it later um, to suit something. So I think fans sort of tend to look like this, believe it or not. Something like that. Amazing, isn't it? That's, that's a perfect fan. I can tell you're already a, a fan of this fan. Right. So, um, we're going to put this in there. That was pretty bad, wasn't it? Okay. And uh, 
maybe just modify the shape a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the, the, the revolution uh, along axis to, uh, to make this into a nice round shape. But first I'm just going to modify it a bit. Actually, you know what I can do? I'll do it first. I'll just go on to here, revolution around axis, and uh, we'll just increase the span a little bit so that we have a little bit more detail. Oh, that's all right in that direction. And what I'll do is we can always subdivide it later if we need more. And I'll just uh, invert this so that it's there. So now we have uh, the fan, sort of. Now we just need to modify. I'm not happy with the bottom of this at all. So uh, we'll just, uh, again, modify this to sort of make a nice shape. Okay, something like this. And if I want it a little bit more angular, I can just bring these points together. Okay, and this is sort of the, the turbine exit. There we go. And we'll just uh, add it. Again, like I can put a subdivision surface on it later if, if I don't like the, the actual shape. So uh, I'm not too worried about it. But it's just to get the rough shape on it. And uh, I can also always work on it later. It's not a big deal. Now let's bring it out a little bit. I think they need a little bit sort of more rounded rounded shape. Actually, you know, sometimes they have like this this sort of overlap going on here. Uh, don't know exactly why. Actually, I'm beginning to sound a little bit like Bob Ross, which is not entirely a bad thing. Okay. Bob Ross of 3D. Now I just need to get those fantastic hair that he has. And I'm set. Okay, so something like this. Okay, so that's going to be my uh, basic shape of the fan. And uh, let's just put a subdivision on it just to have a look and see what it looks like like that. Okay, that's pretty good. I think we can be satisfied with that. And uh, if we need to scale it or something later, we can always do that just to fit it, suit it on. Or we can always go into the curve later and match it to thing. Now, one thing that we need is some fan blades in there. And uh, actually, what we also need, just occurred to me, is we need uh, some sort of pointy cone thing in the front. So um, what I'm going to do is actually just create some subdivisions in height along this guy, scale it down a little bit, and just move it sort of up. And uh, then we can just go in here and just grab these fellows. and just scale them out a little bit so we have a little bit. I could have also done a revolution along this guy and that sort of thing, but I didn't, so there. And actually, you know what, I might just add a little bit more roundness to it so that it's, oops, I've already, eh, I'll just subdivide it later if I need to, that's okay. Um, right, so now let's get the uh, fan blades. Basically, I'm, just, I'm not gonna go into huge detail on the fan blades, I'm just gonna make some cubes, scale them down like this, and uh, scale them down like this, and maybe like this, and we'll just uh, move them so that they're right about there, and move them up, and we can see, okay, they're still too long, so they're going to be right outside the doohickum here, okay, and just move this up a little bit, okay, and now we'll just scale them down a little bit more, they're still far too long, Bring them in. Okay, that's looking good. And the other thing, of course, is rotate them because fan blades are always sort of in an angle, being fan blades. And uh, what I can also do is actually I can go in here to the center and just scale down the uh, edge a little bit so that they're a little wider on the outside than on the inside. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm just going to move the center of the uh, fan blade uh, right to the sort of inside. And actually, if I turn on the grid snap, uh, I can I can move it a lot easier. Oh, sorry. Turn on the grid snap, not the off the point snap. There we go. So it's now smack in the middle, and uh, go back to my object. And now what I can do is uh, if I duplicate it, let's just go to our duplicate instantiation, and we'll just go to duplicate multiple. Now uh, we'll probably need quite a few of those, and let's say uh, I don't know how many are we going to need. Well, let's just have a look and see. What we can always do is we could have gone it in with uh, ghosting and all that sort of thing and then the animation, but we'll just do a rotation around Y at, uh, let's say, every, I don't know, 
It's really hard to tell. I'm just going to guess maybe every 15 degrees or something. Okay. So we'll say 15 degrees. They're going to turn. And now I can't remember how many 15s there are in 360. So I'm just going to type it in here. And that's one of the fantastic things about these little windows is you can just type them in. And then there we get our fan blades. So that's going to be, that's pretty good, I think. And uh, you can just duplicate these and move them down. And actually, then we just go to uh, scale. We could scale them down like this. Other way. And just suit them right in there. Okay, so now we have uh, sort of a fan type thing for our uh, helicopter. Now, one thing is I have all these things here. And if you look, that's a lot of stuff uh, to be to be put into one. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a null, okay? And I'm going to grab all this, except for the null, and just move it underneath the null. So I've great basically created a parent object under which this is all uh, in there. So unhide our helicopter, and uh, oh, don't scale. That's not what I was intending to do. There we go. Let's just move on that. Uh -huh. Okay, and the other thing is uh, we want to just grab here and select all the child, child nodes and we also want to freeze all the uh, scaling and everything just so we have that. So freeze all transforms. Okay, now I hope I can now pull it. No, I can't. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Why is that not doing what it should. Ah, uh, yes, one other thing that probably would be useful is because I'm now pulling the curve, that I put the initial curve underneath the NURBS, uh, underneath the null as well, so I'm pulling the curve and is now scaling the uh, uh, the original shape accordingly. So again, basically what I should do is I should just freeze them off. So we freeze the whole history stack, it's going to be faster that way anyway. There we go, and now we can pull it. Yes, learning by doing. Okay, so now we're uh, going to sort of put this on. One thing that I notice is actually, immediately right after I've frozen it, that uh, it's actually not quite big enough. So I can just scale this whole thing up. And because I have everything selected, it will uh, actually scale them all. Because I've uh, actually scaled, I can also delete that uh, fellow there. And um, let's just uh, move this guy somewhere to the end. You know, I think that might be a little bit too much. Let's just bring that back in a little bit. And you can see because child compensation is now off, I can actually scale it to a uh, fairly reasonable, uh, just just by scaling the null. So, okay, let's just duplicate that guy. And uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm also going to freeze all transforms. Um, I don't have to, and I can always reset it later, but for one particular reason, if I actually now duplicate this fellow, and, oops, uh, well, that wasn't quite what I intended to do, but there we go. Let's just move this back in here a little bit, and uh, well, I'll just duplicate it. And I can actually uh, scale it in minus if I wanted to, so that it's symmetrical, and then just put a minus in here, and it'll automatically translate it over to that end. Now I could freeze the scaling so I could rotate it or something. Okay, so we're uh, looking a little bit more advanced now. And, uh, I mean, obviously I could set in things so that they're that they're turnable and, and all that sort of thing. But, again, this is just sort of a, a vague, quick demonstration of uh, building a, a polygon object. It's not, I mean, it's not going to be, you know, like I said, it's not going to be the mother of all of all helicopters. So now we need uh, some sort of landing gear for it to land on. Now either I could do some sort of complex thing with flaps that open out and uh, all that sort of uh, great stuff, but unfortunately I think we'd be here for several hours if I started doing that. So um, not because it would be difficult to model, but because I probably would take hours to figure out how to do it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to um, build sort of your average helicopter type landing gear. And uh, to do that, I'm just going to duplicate these guys and just uh, extrude them out like this, something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate again and extrude out again. 
And then I'm going to use another fantastic tool that we have in XSI, which is the bridge tool. And I'm just going to go and grab this fellow and uh, this fellow here. And we're just going to bridge them. Okay, and what it does is it just connects those. Actually, I could have done the other two at the same time, too, because it'll it'll say, uh, it'll, it'll detect uh, polygons that are across from each other and will automatically bridge them. Okay, and then um, we're just going to take the front here and the front here. And uh, actually, might as well do the back at the same time, too. There we go. And we'll just duplicate them and uh, scale them out, or we could go into the length. Okay, and maybe duplicate again and just move them up a little bit. Okay, so that's uh, the basics of the landing gear. Phenomenally complex landing gear. Um, one thing I've just noticed is I'm not particularly happy with the way that uh, I brought those out. So what I can do is I could go back into my extrude operation and uh, hope that I find the right one, which is this one here, and just increase the length a little bit. So, I mean, that again is a, is a phenomenal time saver, being able to go back in your history and uh, change things. God, it's looking like I planned all this, isn't it? All right, so we're going to uh, just put a subdivision in this and uh, just add a little bit of detail in there. Right, and now the other thing that I've just decided is that I think this is all a little bit too angular. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually grab these guys and I don't actually need the uh, actual subdivisions this way. So I'll just unselect these guys, which is uh, quite easy to do. And I just reselect the bits that I just accidentally deselected. And uh, let's just go in there and double check that what I did actually select and deselect made sense. So we should have complete edges on all of the sides. Yep, 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 yep. Oops, seems I missed a couple there. So we'll uh, just go in there and make sure we add those. And just make sure we add those at the end. Ooh, didn't want to do that. Hit the wrong shift button. Caps lock instead of shift. Very useful thing not to do. Okay, and uh, that looks pretty good. Oops, I see one thing that I did accidentally miss in here. I'm sure there's a faster way of doing this if you actually pay attention to what you're doing, but uh, for now, we'll just do it like this. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit a bevel on this. And uh, maybe just uh, put some rounding on it and a little bit more of a bevel. All right, so there we go. So, all in all, that's uh, about all I'm going to do with this uh, creation here. It's uh, a marvelous piece of work. Actually, no, I see one other thing that I'm going to have to do. It needs another tail thing right here. It does. I can tell that immediately. This is just not aerodynamic enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, grab, create another edge in here, and uh, just do an extrude right out like that. Okay. Actually, sorry, I picked one too many. I just wanted to do the last one. That's why I created this front one, is so that we can have uh, the uh, skirting ratio in the front to create that nice sharp edge. Okay, and now if we uh, just go and frame in here, we can just quickly uh, modify this by hand. Just bring that forward a little bit. Select our two edges here on the uh, outsides of it. I could also just go in and modify the skirting ratio, but just because I'm in a little bit of a roll here. I'll just do it like that. Okay, so now we're uh, that's looking better. And uh, maybe just scale these guys down, something like that. Or we'll actually even just make it a little sharp and zippy little thing at the back there. Okay. So there you go, a uh, sort of a low-poly uh, helicopter thing in... Uh, not very much time. I didn't actually measure the time, but uh, I'm sure if you look at the duration of this uh, Camtasia, you'll know exactly how long it was. And I mean, like this is fairly low poly. Okay, so thanks a lot. I hope you uh, saw a little bit. Again, this was not supposed to be the end all of all modeling tutorials. Um, it's just sort of a little entry level. How can I uh, start creating polys and how can I work with them? Um, just to show some of the tools. 
so thanks a lot, and uh, have fun with the rest of the uh, training DVDs.